today we discuss uh, some of the interesting features of functional programming, especially with Scala supports, what we call it as match case statements. So in order to understand how that works, uh, we take two problems. Those two problems we have already solved uh, in some manner. So what we try to do is uh, to revisit those uh, with uh, match case. So in our first example, we are asking to write a function to return a maximum value of two real numbers. In the second, we are asking a function to write a function to return pass of pairs by after giving the student result the number. The third one is to write a function which tells the given number is even number or odd number. And let's take a first problem. So the traditional way of solving this problem is using if else. So as you may see, we wrote a function called maximum, take two integer inputs and return value is decided based on this if else. So it says, if a greater than or equal b, return a, else return b. So that means if a is a maximum, this function will return a, otherwise that function will return b. So that is the simple function, function definition of maximum. So when you pass these two numbers, it might return five. For these two, it returns to it. So the same thing, we can implement it in a nice way using what we call it as match case. Uh, this match case statements are heavily used or kind of like preferred by functional programming developers because it has so many convenient coding styles. So especially for pattern matching, it has uh, amazing flexibility. Uh, for the programmers. So this match case is different than switch case uh, in the traditional programming languages like C. In the switch case, you know, we can give a uh, variable integer or some variable to the switch and then we can check the equality. So whether the given uh, switch value, let's say n is equal to one, two or three like that, if you have given a, a character, whether that character is equal to A or B or whatever. So usually switch case stack the equality. So in the match case is kind of different. Uh, so we can even check the patterns. Uh, we can even uh, do equality as well, obviously. But in addition to that, we can check the patterns. Uh, so most of the functional programming developers, especially Scala developers, prefers match case instead of if else. So if there are two conditions to be checked, if else and match case are kind of similar, but there are multiple conditions to be checked. Match case are so easy to use or so sort of flexible to use. So for example, uh, so this is a uh, kind of a syntax of match case statement. So first of all, we have to write expression and then we say match and then we put the block within the match statement. So we, in, inside the match statement, we may have different cases. So in the key, after this case keyword, we can put a pattern, pattern to match. So not only equality, we can also match the pattern then this pattern is get match and this expression is performed. So this is a special symbol uh, which we uh, use in this match case. It's kind of like if this is match, do this. So that is the meaning of that. So usually in the uh, functional programming, this symbol quote, call it as transform symbol. So if it is only equal sign, this is, you know, it's assignment, assignment operator that do assignment of this left hand, right hand side to the left hand side. 
So when you have this symbol or this operator, that refers transform operator. This transform operator will heavily use in functional program. So for example, there is a case and the pattern, this pattern is transformed to this particular expression. So that it really means. Right. Let's see now how we can rewrite our maximum function using match case. So here we define a maximum, take these two inputs, and this is the function definition. There we write expression. Our expression is x greater than or equal b. That is the expression. So that expression is a logical expression because of that it returns to two values. That is true or false. So then we say this return value is match to those two cases we do this. So for example, if that match case true, output transform to A, if that match to false, it transform to B. That means if this is this expression value is true, A will be written. If this expression value is false, B will be written. Similar to if else. So when you execute that, we definitely get the same result. Okay, since it is only have two uh, uh, two selections, you might not feel it's the advantage of mass case, but when you move on, you might feel that. So let's take our next example. There we want to write a function called pass fail. Let's take the marks as the input value and return the string called pass or fail uh, based on these marks. So here we also use match case. So this is our pass fail function, and we have an expression here. Our expression is we check whether this marks greater than or equal zero, and then match the output of this expression. So if that output of this expression is matched to true, it returns false. If that matched to false, it returns fail. So this function will return a string called pass or fail based on this value marks. Obviously, I will show those demos in a separate video. Matching with wild match case can be used uh, to matching with wild cards as well. So, usually, when you want to match with wild cards, so they are, we are using underscore symbol. So, we can define different cases using case keyword, and finally, we can say case underscore zero that means all the other values. So for example, uh, let's take uh, some other example. So to pick the uh, write a function, in this is our example, we are asking you to write a function to find it out the even or the odd numbers. You know odd numbers are the numbers which, which may not be divided by two, like one, three, five. Even numbers are the numbers like two, four, and six. So if you want to write a function to do so using match case, our function may look like this. So we define a function for this even. We take a number integer and return a Boolean value. If it is an even number, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. So we write an expression that is x modular two is the expression. It may have two values that is zero or something else. That is basically one if you model by modular by two either zero or one. So maybe something else may be possible if it is uh, this x is modular by some other um, fine. So here our expression is x modular two. We match the results to zero. If it is zero, it return true. That means the given number is divided by two. So then we say case underscore. All other cases we return false. In this simple example, usually we have only one case, but if underscore represent all other case except this first case. Okay, let's go and check some complex examples. So for example, so we take two other problems. So in the first problem it says write a, write a program to check the leap year. So leap year you know have several conditions. If, if the year is exactly divided by four and not divided by 100, then it is a leap year. So that is the first condition. 
And else, if the year is exactly divisible by 400, then it's also leap year. Any other cases, it is a common year, not a leap year. So there are three conditions to be checked. So, and each condition has two things sometimes here. There's two, two things to check. So let's see how it could be implemented. Uh, in the second, we are asking, we are asking you to write a function uh, to solve this uh, sinus uh, value. So our sinus function has three outputs. If, it's, if it, it is a plus one, if x greater than zero, zero if it is x equal zero, in other cases, it is minus one. So let's say we want to implement a function for a sine, which return these uh, three outputs. Okay, so let's uh, take the first one, finding the leap year. So there we write a function for leap year, take the year as integer, this is the parameter which used by the leap year function, and it returns true or false based on our condition. So th there are several conditions to be checked before we determine the given year is a leap year. So what are these conditions? So in the first condition, it says it's, the year need to be divided by four. That is, we uh, check that year mod four equals zero, and that year is not divided by 100. So that is the first condition. If that is satisfied, it's an easy. So these two conditions both must be satisfied in order to become that year as a leap year. So we combine these two with and operator and logical operator. So then other condition need to be satisfied is if that year is modular by 100, 400, then it is a leap year. So then we check whether the given year mod 400 is equal to zero. So these two basically link with O condition. So it has a very long expression to be checked. So after that, result of this expression we match with true or false. So if it is true, it return true, that is actually a leap year case. If it is false, it return false, that is not leap year case. So all the problems we kind of discussed so far are, has only two options. So this particular problem now which we're going to discuss has three options. So for example, if greater than zero, it has some value to be written. If equal zero, there is a value to be written. Less than zero, there is a value to be written. There are three parts. Obviously, in the traditional programming, we can, we can implement it using if else that are something look like. So we have defined a sign function here, it's return integer value. If given x is greater than zero, it return one. Else, we have another if statement, what we call it as else, if s equal zero, we return zero, or else return minus y. There are three conditions uh, to be checked. Uh, so this thing, we can easily implement it uh, using what we call it as uh, if case. So if you want to implement this if case, uh, if you want to solve this problem with if case, we are using what we call it as pattern guards, pattern guards. So the format of that is something like, the syntax of that is something like here. So we have case and under case also we have some pattern. So if that pattern is satisfied, then we have this Boolean expression. If that pattern is matched to this kind of Boolean expression, then it transforms to the set of output. You can understand what I mean by looking at the code. So for example, I implement the same sign code using match case. So you see there is a sign function here, it returns an integer and I get this value x to be match here. Then here there are expression. This, this expression only has one value, that is x. That is a variable or parameter passed to this function. So we check whether that parameter passed to this function matches these three conditions. So using cases. 
So how do we write it like we say case x. This is first case. First case with this in integer x. What is the case we check? If x greater than c. So this call it has pattern guard. So if that has is by if x satisfies this condition, it returns whole transform the output to one. If given x is satisfy this condition, it transforms zero. And here in the otherwise it transforms minus one. So that's how we can implement sine function. Right. Now let's assume we know the function uh, to return pass and pin. Assume now we want to write a function to return a, a, b, c, whatever, like different grades. So if we want to do or check those different grades, you know, we have to check different ranges using if else, if else statements. So if you try to do that with uh, uh, more than like kind of a uh, considerable number of ranges, so it takes time. Uh, it's, it's actually, it's a kind of a programmer's point of view, it's, it's, it's kind of inconvenient. It's reduced the readability, uh, read, read, uh, readability of the problem. So, match case can be used here very easily to implement the same requirement. So, for example, here I am implementing a function called grade. It has a one input that is an integer, and we say this particular mark match. Match what? The case one is if that x if x greater than seventy five. So when you say mark here, the return value here will assign to these cases. So what we what happens there, we check whether these marks that going to be x and check whether that x greater than 75. So then it transforms the output to set a, so it returns a in otherwise. Similarly, check whether the return value of this is greater than 65. How you do that? Here we say case x and then put the condition with the x. So then similarly, check the third tier and all other cases that is represented by underscore returns f. So that's how grade functions look like. Don't worry, all these examples I will demonstrate in a separate video. Right. Assume we have some other, other problems to be solved. One of the first problems we would like to consider is uh, to calculate the take home salary, or, sorry, to calculate the uh, balance of a given account. So, as you may see, it has different interest paying rate based on the amount you deposit. Then, uh, this uh, interest will be added to your. Uh, Account. So then you get created the uh, interest at the end of the month. So in this, uh, we are using, we are writing a function for interest uh, using match case statement to determine the interest uh, for given amounts or given values. So for example, uh, this is the uh, interest function which take one input and we check whether that input, that is amount, amount is matched to those different cases. So we say x if x greater than zero. This is the condition. This value which passes here, amount, assigned to x, and then we see whether that marks x less than zero. If so, output is transformed to zero. And then we check whether it is less than 1,000, it returns this way. If it is less than uh, 10,000 this, 100,000 this, and so on. So as you may see, it basically returns what x multiplied the interest, right? So that is basically the uh, interest which should be added to the 
account at the end of the day. So for example, when you write this interest function with 100, it returns this amount. Right. Now assume we have another function or another program to be sold that is the developer function called tax, which consumes the gross pay and then returns the uh, tax value. And then we uh, different tax rates are defined here and then also we have to develop a function to calculate the uh, payment or the net payment or the take home salary of the employer. Okay, in order to solve this first problem, basically we can have here, uh, you see here, we have different uh, uh, tax rates. Uh, so we write a function for tax to determine those tax rates. So our, here our tax function, how it look like, we take the input, that is income, and we, we match this income with those different cases. So these are the cases we define, that is, the first case we check whether this given value to the function that is actually given value, return value of this income, and check the condition, whether that less than 5,000, 400,000, or else like that. So each of these cases we can mention the interest rate. So then what? Here, what it means is this particular statement is transformed to zero, like that. So then, after we write this tax function, uh, our net pay function is basically income minus tax. So we can write a function called income. Income take the input, and income is working hours into the uh, salary rate. Rate is defined as a value here on the top. Income is defined as the hours by rate, and then net pay is uh, defined as income minus uh, tax. Tax is defined as this. So that's how we solve this problem. In that, we can conclude this short lecture which shows how to use match case statement in functional uh, program. Thank you.